React Native. This tech has been on my radar for a while now as a viable option for building cross-platform mobile apps. I've been doing native mobile development for a minute now, but lately I've had the urge to expand my skill set outside of the native domain. I've recently learned Flutter, and now it's time to dive into this framework to complete the holy trinity of mobile app development. I wanted to see how long it would take me to build my first ever mobile app with this framework. The thing is, I need an app idea. The problem here is I don't have any good app ideas and let's be real, if I did, I wouldn't be making a YouTube video about it. But what I do have is a React.js web app that I built a few months ago of a simple blog. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to convert this web app into a React Native mobile app. Now I'll admit, because I've never really looked into the React Native framework, I thought this was gonna be a pretty easy task, maybe just some configuration changes and boom, I have myself a mobile app. But uh, yeah, I was I was wrong, very wrong. So instead I rebuilt my blog from the ground up in React Native so I could have the mobile version of that blog. So I gave myself a five day time limit to do this. Because I am working a full time job, I decided that I would dedicate three to four hours each night over the course of five days to work on this app. The night before starting this app, I got my laptop all set up with the environment and I watched about 30 minutes of a React Native crash course. So my preferred method of learning is by attempting to write some code. If I get stuck, I Google for the answer. This probably isn't a good method for somebody new. Now, if you're new, I would recommend watching a full course or reading a book, but I've done this a million times before. So usually I know what I need to uh, look for. Anyways, day one, I hit the ground running and I started to work on the blog list page. This is the home screen of the blog where you can see all the blog posts with the most recent one being featured at the top. This was probably the most challenging day because I was getting used to React Native and I was getting used to how to lay out things uh, with the framework. I built the feature card, which displays at the top of the list, as well as the cards for the previous posts underneath. After fleshing out the UI for the home screen, I added the toolbar and then I hooked up my app to my Firestore instance to read an actual blog post data. Lastly, I hooked up navigation in my app so that when you click on one of the blog cards on the home screen, you are navigated to a detail page and that is the end of day one. Day two, I built out the blog detail page and I added a section list to separate the blog post content from the other posts section of the detail page. And at this point, I'm getting very familiar with style sheets and how to lay out things in React Native. Day three was the darkest day of them all. I made the app theme dark mode only. I thought about adding support for light and dark mode, but then I realized only psychopaths use light mode and obviously I don't want psychopaths psychopaths using my app, so dark mode only, it is. So I started out with this completely dark gray color scheme. I didn't really like that, so I went with a more bluish gray theme, and I think that fits the uh, app a lot better. Mind you, I'm pretty bad at designing UIs. Usually I leave that up to the UI designers, but when I don't have one, I try to do my best, which is pretty mediocre. Lastly, I wanted to add comment section support for each blog post, so I stubbed out what that UI would look like. Day four, I finished creating the UI for my comment section and I loaded actual comment data from my Firestore instance. The comments that you see here are the comments from my web blog that I built out a few months ago. After loading in comment data, I started working on the UI for a user to actually leave a comment. I played around with a couple different versions of how this would look, such as placing the leave a comment box at the top of the comment section, but this looked really out of place. So ultimately, I went with a fab or a floating action button on the bottom right of the screen. And when a user clicks that button, they are navigated to uh, the leave a comment uh, page of the app. The UI for this page is pretty bare. There's a lot of white space, but it gets the job done. Day five, and this was my last day working on my app. Last thing I needed to do for this to be a complete one-to-one -one clone of my web app blog was the ability for a user to leave a comment. At this point, I had the UI all stubbed out for leaving a comment. The last thing I needed to do was hook this up with my backend. Now this requires a uh, user authentication to work. Originally, I wanted to have a user signup page or a more formal UI for creating an account, but because this was my final day, I needed to make this as simple as possible. So I ended up adding some logic to this fab to authenticate the user with their Google account. If the user was already authenticated, 
authenticated, then they would just be navigated to the leave a comment page. And if they weren't authenticated, they would be prompted to sign in with their Google account. Once they're logged in, they can drop a spicy comment, which is shown on the blog detail page. And that my friends is it. So let me run you through a quick demo of the full app. I can view all the existing blog posts on this home screen. Again, this is coming from my Firestore instance. I can then click on one of these blog posts and view the full detail of each blog post. And then I can view the comments from the other users and even leave my own comment in real time. Nothing crazy, but mind you, this was my first time ever building a React Native mobile app. This is what I was able to accomplish in five days. So what was the point of building this app? Now, as a mobile developer, I wanted to add this technology to my tool belt, you could say. I think cross-platform technologies have dramatically improved since I started using them back in 2016. And I have to say that I am pretty happy with React Native. For freelance projects or even personal projects, I think this is a great technology to have under my belt. Quickly, I want to address the question that I've gotten asked a few times, which is, should I learn cross-platform or should I learn native for mobile app development. And in the context of React Native versus uh, native mobile development, here's my opinion on that. So having a solid understanding of native mobile development will help you understand what's happening under the hood in React Native, so to speak. When using components in React Native, these components are being compiled to their native views for each platform. For example, if you're using the text component in React Native, this is the equivalent of using the text view field in Android. Also, you may have to do some things where you configure Gradle, which is Android's build system. And you may have to use CocoaPods, which is a dependency manager for iOS projects. For this project specifically, I did have to uh, configure Gradle a little bit when adding Firebase, as well as add some dependencies and CocoaPods for iOS. But because of my native mobile development, it wasn't really too difficult diving into both of those things. And to be honest, having a basic understanding of native, Gradle, and CocoaPods is probably enough to get you started or to build out most applications in React Native. But there may be instances where you run into some limitations with the framework and you have to implement some platform specific code. And this is where native mobile development uh, experience really shines. Anyways, with all the support for React Native, I do think it's one of the best options for developing cross-platform apps in. I'm really happy I dived into this, especially if I take on freelancing again, because it does seem like a lot of smaller projects are taking advantage of React Native. Anyways, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like and sub, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.